Hi everyone. Today we are going to see about how to write the MUX logic using system Verilog. So first let's go over the multiplexer design, the logical diagram of it, the input, the truth table for that and how the uh, logic equation has been working. Let's check this one first and then we can go and see the system Verilog code. The system Verilog code, I used the EDA playground to, to develop the uh, MUX design that I can explain once we know the basics of the multiplexer. The multiplexer is a combination logic circuit designed to switch one of the several input lines to a single common output line. So in this logic diagram, which is uh, designed, the MUX is designed using a NAND gate, which is the universal logic gate. The input A of this simple 2 is to 1 line MUX is constructed by using the NAND gate, which act to control which input gets passed to the output Q. From the truth table, if you see that when the data select input, a is logic 0. When A is logic 0, the input I1 passes to the Q. When A is 0, the I1 passes to the Q. When the select logic A is equal to 1, the I0 is passed to the output Q. When A is equal to 1, I0 is passed to the output Q. So if you can compare the analogy of the multiplexer concept, um, if you are standing in front of a um, uh, machine which can give you a water or juice, right? Um, in the vending machine, if you press the water, then water will go, will, you know, that particular tap will be closed and you get the water as an output. In case if you want uh, any juice and if you are pressing the juice, like orange juice, if you, if you press the button for the orange juice, that particular tap is closed like a pipe and you get the orange juice as the output from the vending machine. A similar concept, a multiplexer, when you have multiple inputs, which input you want to be driven to the output. So that's what we are controlling using a MUX. And the selection line A is the one which will select which one of these input can be given to the output. So that's the high level concept and the logic equation for this, if you convert into a logic equation based on this truth table, we'll get Q is equal to A bar When A is equal to 0, I1 will be passed. So Q is equal to A bar into I1 plus A into I0. Whenever A is equal to 1, I0 is passed to the Q. So A into um, I0. So that's the logic equation for the multiplexer. Um, Three ways of, you know, I use three ways of coding the MUX by using a simple assignment statement, by using if else statement, and by using a combination logic equation, the equation we saw in the previous slide. Um, so, this is a 2 is to 1 MUX. So, the module inputs are I0, I1, and A is a selection, right? There are three outputs. Uh, I choose three outputs because in a single module, I'm giving it three different ways of coding the MUX and putting the output. So same input is used, but there are three different outputs. So all, th all three outputs are like Q1, Q2 and Q3. Q1 is used for the assignment statement based output. Q2 is used for the EFLs. Q3 is used for the logic equation based. So always when any one of this input changes, either I0, I1 or A is changing, then this logic would get triggered. You are assigning the Q1 value. If A is equal to true, if A is equal to 1, then I0 would get assigned. If A is equal to 0, then I1 would get assigned. The next way is like if else. So similarly, inside the always block, if A is equal to 1, begin, you are going to assign Q2 is equal to I0. Else, that means if A is equal to 0, you're going to assign Q is, Q2 is equal to I1. The third method is like using the combinational logic equation. So A into I0 plus A bar into I1. So that is when A is equal to 1, um, I0 will get passed. When A is equal to 0, I1 would get passed to the Q3. So that's the way of coding the MUX here. Um, so here's a test bench in the left-hand side. 
So the module is defined for the test bench. So now we are declaring the variable of the register and wire, like outputs are defined as a wire, the inputs are defined as the registers. Uh, this is the instantiation of the design module and connect the variable uh, declared above on the test bench, like I0 of the design module is connected to the smaller small letter I0 of the test bench. Similarly, I1, the selection line outputs are connected. Once the instantiation of the design module is get connected, now the stimulus is given. So initial, we are getting the stimulus here, I0, the input, um, I1 input, A, what is the starting value of the initial value of it, beginning the default value we are, we are giving it over here. And then um, running the simulation for 200, um, 200 nanosecond and then dollar finish, which will end the uh, simulation. Uh, the, the stimulus now is initiated with the default value. After that, we have to, you know, give a different random value, right? So, at, at every 20 nanosecond, I0 would get inverted. At every 40 nanosecond, I1 would get inverted. At every 10 nanosecond, A would get inverted. So, that's the way, like, uh, the stimulus has been given. Now, I'm monitoring the stimulus, monitoring, you know, at the timestamp. Um, whenever, that means, whenever there's a change happen, I0, I1, or A is changing, any one of these value changes, we are monitoring. What is the time? At that time, what is the value of A, uh, selection line, and two inputs, and then the three outputs that is getting displayed here. So this is about the uh, MUX design and how to code the MUX in the system log. I'll show you the simulation in the EDA playground now. Okay, so we are in the EDA playground. I um, have opened the same design file, whatever I already explained, and also the test pen stimulus, right? Now let's run the simulation and see how the output looks like. Okay, so the simulation passed and then um, LAB is passed. Uh, the simulator is uh, started running at this point. So at zero nanosecond, you know, all our default value. At 10 nanosecond, when A is equal to one, um, when A is equal to 1, I0 would get passed. Um, when A is equal to 0, I1 would get passed to the output. When A is equal to 1, I0 would get passed. So I0 is equal to 0, all the outputs are, sorry, I0 equal to 1, all the outputs are 1. When A is equal to 0, so I1 would get passed. So I1 is equal to 1, all the outputs are 1. So similarly, you can check a couple of other examples. So, which would, uh, let's, let's check few more samples, okay. When A is equal to 1, I0 would get passed. So, I0 is 0. So, all the three outputs are 0. When A is equal to 0, I1 would get passed. I1 is equal to 0. So, all three outputs are 0. So, this uh, uh, code is working fine uh, and some later. Thank you.